Hi everyone, thanks for taking the time to tune in. So today I want to go over some of the new features that Autodesk have introduced into the January update for Fusion 360. So there was so much in that update that it's it's difficult to try and capture everything in one video. So what I'm going to do is try and capture some of the new plastic rule um, features that Autodesk have applied to their new extension. So they've added a new extension which is called the product design extension so what they've what they've kind of uh, um, told us in the um, run-up to this is that it's not just specifically around plastics but at the moment that's where they've focused although they feel that this product design um, extension will kind of uh, grow and we'll see a lot more automation which is really good uh, if you've ever used kind of a sheet metal before and you know yourself there's a lot of rules that are based on the thickness of the sheet metal um, and whether you use multi bodies and it's all very interconnected and when you make changes to that material it updates your features and therefore that's what they've kind of done with the plastics as well so it's quite nice it's actually quite um, refreshing to be fair I've never done a lot with plastics before in um, my career but it's it's still quite a really good addition. I, I feel like it's going to be quite strong and the tools that are within it, um, especially things like presets and things like that, which you'll see in the dialog boxes, have now pushed forward again with I can only imagine how this product's going to grow over the ma you know, over the next few years. So let's ha let's have a quick look. Um so I've just put in uh, two plastic components, um a bottom and a top. And what I've done is I've given them a thickness. Let's just get rid of that data panel. Um, and within the kind of a um, creation of these two parts, what I did was I assigned a, a, a plastic material. So what they've done is they've given you an extra tab in the ribbon and the tabs specifically um, called plastic at the moment. And then they've given you assignment rules and uh, management of those rules along with some really nice features that include um, additional features in the web command, additional features for things like um, the pattern tools. So they've got like a, a boss, a snap fit, and then they've got this geometric pattern as well, which is quite nice. So a combination between all of these tools for um, the guys out there that are creating plastics is going to be phenomenal. Do you know, it's going to allow you to build your plastic components a lot quicker like I said I don't have much experience with plastics but I'm still you know able to at least use the tools to come up with some sort of design um, what I've done here is in each of the components that I've created the bottom and the top I've assigned uh, a plastic rule for ABS which has given me um, the thickness of the material which is 1.5 so if I go ahead and measure that just get the dialog box in the right window um, if I go ahead and measure out the thickness of that that um, shell, then you'll see that it's it's the 1.5 millimeter thickness that's been assigned by the material. So um, if we go into the bottom, for instance, and and activate that just now, if I go into the plastic rule itself, select it, it tells me that the bottom component selected in the active um, rule that's being used just now is the ABS, which is 1.5. So Autodesk have obviously incorporated. Um, these materials um, at, by default at the moment and because it's fairly fresh you'll know that but um, after time you know things will start to to grow and they'll have more so at the moment they've got these standard ones and if I go ahead and select a new one and click OK it updates the thickness of the material and it applies my new nylon um, material and it updates the thickness so that thickness is driven from parameters and if you've ever used any parameter driven applications before you'll know how powerful it can be so again we're stepping into that kind of a um, environment where it's more parameter driven which is really quite nice but also still has that really fresh kind of a feel on the ability to be able to do a lot more quicker and it's, it's quite a nice um, environment to have inside Fusion um, so if we go ahead and just undo that change that we made, just because I want to introduce you to um, the boss command as well. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot in these um, new tools that I haven't even had a chance to venture into. But 
my very, very basic kind of an overview of them has made it so much easier to use. Um, there's there's nothing in there that's overly complicated. In fact, there is a lot of complex geometry based around some of the commands um, that I'm pretty sure the guys, again, who are producing plastic components will very much um, enjoy. So let's take a look at um, the sketches that I've applied. So I've got I've got two sketches within my model, um, and what I've done here is I have just put another sketch in between the two components. And what's going to happen here is if you want a boss between the two parts that we've got, so if we turn the two of them on um, and we activate the top level assembly, if we want to apply say a boss in between those two then the command for the boss command is actually quite useful. So we can go ahead and what we're doing is we're applying the boss to, to points. So those points are kind of based around um, the areas in which you would want that boss to be to be applied to your plastic component. And there's so much going on in here. So we can do things like change the head shapes. So we can, we can update the head shape. We can update the drive. So at the top, you can see the information um, is actually updating inside the model. Uh, we can see that the top component and the bottom component are completely involved. And as we scroll around, the section of the part um, is shown as exactly what that should look like. So we've got full control over the top and the bottom, and then we've got full control over how it's actually um, you know, driving the whole through, the whole thread, the information that it, everything is all in one. I, I can't believe they've actually been able to do this in one dialog box. So you've got full control over it. Like I said, the guys who are using this quite often might find um, a few things that they really enjoy about this. From someone who's never used it before, I just think it's quite amazing. So you can see that it's driving the um, screws through both areas. And it's what it's going to do is it'll even put some fillets and stuff like that in some of these areas for us. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK on that. Um, and you can see if I look down from the top, it's applied the screws. It's applied them into the model because you can see them in the browser. Um, and if we do a quick analysis on this, just so that we can um, we can do a section analysis and we'll drive it through the centre of the part. Um, we'll go with this plane. And we'll say OK to that, and then we'll just have a quick zoom in. So you can see how it's applied the fillets. So it's got our boss, which is applied to the both the components at the same time, and it's driving through with a screw. It's 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 almost like the bolted connection within Inventor. It's it's really quite powerful. Uh, I think it's it's a fantastic addition. Um, and then there's other things as well. So there are other um, elements of kind of a the product design collection, uh, sorry, the product design um, extension that they've added in. So many Autodesk products, so many Autodesk products. Um, okay, so if I just kind of I get rid of the, the top and we turn that sketch back on so that we can see it, we can use things like this snap fit, which again is, again, it's a, it's, it's a feature that I've seen before in lots of plastic components, but never really had to apply one. Um, so if I select kind of our point, somewhere again all i've done is apply the point and all of the dimensions can be totally modified um if i actually undo that and then i go back and put the top on as well so um oh sorry so i've put the top on um i go back to my snap and then i'm going to apply it so i'm going to pick the point there and i'm going to turn it 90 degrees and you can see it's applying it to the top and the bottom um and if i just go ahead and click ok on that without really doing much you can see that it's applied a hole which is connecting to the top and the bottom component it's it's actually quite bizarre how quick it how it does it um and there's a whole heap of you know different types um again only assuming autodesk will enhance on top of them so i've left the kind of the best one to last and the addition to this one is the geometric pattern um I haven't actually shown you the web, but the web effect will add additional uh, fillets into your web whenever you apply them. So you'll see 
it will add additional um, fillets and um, draft angles whenever you use the feature. So again, if you want to venture into having a go at that, then you know, have a go at that one as well. There's just so much, so much I want to talk about, so much I want to tell you. Uh, but obviously try to keep the video as short as possible so you don't get too bored. <laughs> but um, but yeah, left the best till last, which is my geometric uh, pattern command. And as you select the face, what it does is it gives you a set of objects that you can apply. And those objects can either be added to the material or taken away from the material from the basic generic kind of operations that Autodesk give you availability to. So if we go ahead and go for something like a sphere, and if we look down from the top, and we, we can use our adjustment um, arrows that we've got here, and we can make the spaces in between them shorter, um, and we can almost gear them towards, I mean, as you get as it gets smaller, you can see how it just nicely, just kind of a, it fits, it, it fits really nice, and it's all geared towards, um, it's all kind of a, it's, it's geared towards you being able to apply something with size and distribution gradients, which is something that's never really been available before. And it's it's quite, again, quite refreshing to be able to do that type of thing. So if we go ahead and, um, do you know, we can either add them as a new body. So if I click OK, that adds it as a new body. It looks fairly strange. Uh, but if we go ahead and do the same thing again, we can... Um, do you know cut it out as well so if I say cut this time you can see it's a different type of pattern that's been added but if I go ahead and cut that away you can see that it's added the cutting as well it's just it's just significant how quickly it's done it as well and it's fully adjustable and fully customizable if for instance you had um, let's just do something really quite crazy um, if we just put in like a small circle not bothering about any sort of sizes here and if we just do this real quick and real fast and just not paying much attention uh, we can actually use a custom kind of a obviously that's not going to happen so I'm going to delete that out because it was before it um, and if we select the face this time and if we go for the, the one at the end which is custom and if we select that small kind of a solid that we just applied and we can turn the solid bodies on and off like the way that we normally would um, and what it will do is it will use that solid body and it will produce something on the top it doesn't mean make sense to cut that but we will change that to a new body um, and you can see that it's it's applied it it's just yeah really quick um, and they're all individual bodies as well so let's say for instance you didn't want to see certain ones you can turn them on and off Okay, so that's like your geometric pattern and like I said, it's it's based on size and distribution. But the way that Autodesk have done it with this product design and, um, extension is at the moment, like I said, they've given you tools which are based around plastics, but I can only see this growing in the future. Uh, and like, like I mentioned, the assignment and um, reassignment of materials at the moment, we're using plastic. So uh, the ABS plastic, sorry, if we want to go ahead and change any of these, so if I turn the top one off and I turn off um, the features just, just so that you can see just the bottom. Um, and if we go ahead and modify the bottom, if we go to the actual plastic rule that's assigned, we can then go to the library and assign a new plastic. Yeah, so it... All of the commands that we're applying, everything that we're doing is all connected to this plastic material. Um, and the rule is very much, like I said, geared towards the same as sheet metal. So it should be something that if you've ever used sheet metal, you're familiar with. And if you're not, it's still even quite powerful. So as you can tell from my excitement, I'm actually quite excited about it. I really quite like it. It's, it's maybe not something I'll use every single day, but for the guys who are using plastics, I think it's quite significant. And that's just not all of what Autodesk have introduced in January. There's just so much more. So they have introduced a lot of new features in just the assembly environment alone. And they are geared towards things like replacing components. So what I think I'll do is I'm just going to blog about this just now. And then I'll 
put something together for the other kind of our updates that Autodesk introduced um, on the 18th of January as well. So if you haven't um, if you haven't looked at this yet, guys, then take time to look at it. If you've if you're creating plastics, let me know how you feel about it. Um, do you know connect with me on LinkedIn? Let me know if it's any good, what the good, the bad, the ugly is. I'm always keen to find out um, what you you feel and what you think about uh, these additions that Autodesk introduce on a 46 week basis and um, the product's just going so fast and I'm always excited about it. So feel free to reach out and uh, thanks again for, for taking the time to, to read the blog. Take care guys.